Now, those numbers are indeed worrying, but here's a woman who's taking rehabilitation efforts a step further using steam camps. Working with international partners, she's offering the tools that can place the least likely on the path to success in the modern world ruled by tech. Professor Hawa Ibrahim was born in Gombe State, northeast Nigeria, and grew up in a small village at a time when girls were married off right after elementary school. But her determination to get an education made her resort to hawking to pay her way through school. Through sheer persistence and the gracious support of others, she attended Teachers High School for Women, the local university in Jos, North Central Nigeria, and continued to law school. She trained as a human rights lawyer and became the first female in a region to achieve this feat. Before starting a legal practice in 1996, she was a prosecutor at the Ministry of Justice in Bochi State. Professor Ibrahim gained prominence with her pro bono work, defending people condemned under the Islamic Sharia law in the North. She defended over 150 cases involving women sentenced to death by stoning and children sentenced to amputation of limbs. In 2005, she won the European Parliament's Sakharov Prize for Freedom of Thought. She was a visiting professor at St. Louis University School of Law and World Fellow at Yale University, Radcliffe, and Harvard University, where she's presently a teacher and researcher. She has visited 70 countries and taught in over a dozen of them. She served as an envoy for the United Nations Bar Association's Council on Human Rights and on Nigeria's Presidential Investigation Panel to review compliance of the armed forces with human rights obligations and rules of engagement. She is the founder of the project Mothers Without Borders, which focuses on diverting youth from extremism. Today, she is the president of the Peace Initiative, an organization with a mission to pursue international peace through education and leadership initiatives for positive social change. Under her leadership, the organization collaborated with well C College to develop and implement science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics summer camps in northern Nigeria. The goal of the project is to excite elementary school people's interest in STEAM. The project has so far impacted over 1,500 pupils from over 100 elementary schools. Welcome back to the program. We find Professor Ibrahim in the heart of Abuja doing what she loves the most, helping the vulnerable. Yes. Is easy, isn't it? Yes. And it's making it easy, isn't it? Yes. That's for our in the modest library of the school, she starts by telling us about her humble beginnings and has a twinkle in her eye as she recounts her tale from hawking on the streets of northern Nigeria to ending up in Harvard. You see those people that, uh, the teller girls, the one that hawk, the hawkers, they learn street trick that nobody knows. For me, being street smart will make you better book smarter. So what that's what, what Tanda has done to me. Because I have found myself in very interesting situation while I was growing up, I became book smart later and that street smart helped to solidify my book smart. There was a combination that made it powerful. I wrote my first book, which became a bestseller in Amazon. But a lot of it is related to my being on the street. Not my, my, my story was sort of the cases I handled. The book is titled Practicing Sharia Court in, in the Seven Strategy or How to Achieve Justice in Sharia Courts. That's the title of my book. And it's a bestseller. It's still on Amazon. It's still selling very well. And I found whatever I have done has added value. When I say I was in the police, I have learned to be extremely vigilant. I was in the police for NYC. And so every small thing that everybody does, don't underestimate it because it adds value to life later. Professor Ibrahim talks about her passion for upholding the rights of vulnerable children and helping women get justice. So actually, I never heard of the word Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> because of where I came from, I never heard of the word Harvard. I finished university, I did everything. Harvard never come into a conversation. Um, like I was saying, I became educated by accident. I became a lawyer by accident. Um, 
And how I got into Harvard was I went after those Sharia notorious cases that I was defending, uh, part of the defense team. It was a teamwork. Um, I don't know how they got me, uh, because some of the places we go are on the donkeys, on the horses, on the bike we walk. Uh, we were doing things from our heart. We know we're not doing things because we want somebody to say thank you or because, no, it's just our people that needed our help. We have the skills. We want to go to wherever they are to look for them. And of course, the people like you, the press men, and I think you form major one of the major part of our story. You knew about it. You followed it. You advertised it. You, you mentioned it to medias. And it was a media man that knew about some of these cases that put it on the public. And we, uh, an NGO picked it, they invited me. Moving forward, it was the same media present that went into European Parliament. And European Parliament felt, oh, we are going to honor her. So they honored me. And it was during that moment of those cases that my name went outside the country. But before then, I did most horrific things uh, in the villages. Nobody asked me to do it. If I know you need help, I'll jump into it and help. But helping others came at a great cost to her personal safety. I gave an interview on the radio and about whether Sharia, whether stoning to death is part of uh, is in the Quran, and I said no. And I got Ike from a lot of people saying I was anti-Sharia, I was anti-Islam. And they should also like stone me if they find me. So I got like a fatwa on my head. And at that moment, I think some of the embassy felt I was at risk and should go out of the country. They gave me the form. I really forgot where I put the form. So I threw the form away. And later, the one of them forced me to come and fill the form in their office. I didn't know what they knew. But they said, go and spend some uh, six weeks and then come back. And I was, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go nowhere. I'm happy with Nigeria. I'm not, I don't want to go anywhere. But I went. I went and it was what you call home free scholarship. I got a home free scholarship. And if you, if you know your core, if you know you are, I mean, if you are good, you are good anywhere you find yourself. And all of a sudden, I was also discovered during the home free scholarship. And I became a big story in the United States. And Harvard invited me. I never knew of Harvard. So Harvard invited me to come. They invited me to come to Radcliffe for 10 months. And this is like 14 years counting. They never want to let go. Her passion for giving children an alternative to violence and extremism is palpable as she weaves her way through the class, excited about what the STEAM camps could potentially achieve. The STEAM idea started from from the cases I handled. So I, I started the cases of the women sentenced to death by stoning in Nigeria. I went back and about shortly after the cases, there was this Apple, Apple 6. There was a big case about Apple 6. It was during Obasanjo's time. And he invited us to come and be a panel to a commission on that. And then it moved into President Jonathan asking me to come in when they uh, kidnapped the Chibo girls. Remember in between I have been mostly out of the country and I've written the book. And I think somebody saw the book online and they said, we also know about how we'll call her, that's President Jonathan, to come and help with the effort to rescue the girls. So we had the presidential commission. I came back to Nigeria to work. And then this regime, when Osibanjo was the vice president, he went to Harvard, he saw my book in the Divinity School. And he also said I should come back to help uh, with the effort to, it was the Nigerian army, it was a big deal about how they were terrorizing the IPOP and the rest of them. And the international community stopped Nigeria from getting ammunition. We cannot live without I mean, some certain sector of the country. So he asked us to come and review uh, what the army has been doing so that we can give a report uh, to the international community. So they match on this credibility that one has. So I have come under three precedents. So STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Maths. And the students that I have here are from University of Rome. But the people that make the kits, they, so we have a STEAM kit which you didn't see, they are creating science. We are going to put all what they are creation into a kit also. So we have our kit that has a pipe apps, the a test tubes and the rest of them for their, we'll put it together and we'll also give them a certificate for participating. But for me, it's beyond the five weeks we spend. 
in three camps, which is nothing. Uh, but, but if they continue, for me, it's more powerful. And I'm also hoping that I will have more time to come and spend with the children, more maybe with the teachers, to see how we can interact more. Uh, and we can do now hybrid online. They can put a screen. We can come up together and discuss. So any way that we'll, we can help give them an alternative to violence, for me, that makes my day. We were interested in what keeps her motivated. Here's how she responded. When I came to the University of Jos, we had scholarship by Bochy State Government and they gave us three uh, meal tickets. I never used three meal tickets. I use one meal ticket or two at most. I give one to, I sell one meal ticket. In my head, I don't want to be the last person to come to the university. I want to buy a form and go back to my village and say I'm in the university and I want somebody to take the form to fill. So it's such a long time ago. How can we give ourselves as a sacrifice sometime for somebody else's benefits? For me, it was what kept driving me. And it's beyond education. And here's her counsel to those who have lost hope as a result of difficult circumstances. You develop yourself. Your core is inside of you. And over time, you don't have to flout it around. Let the let people see the inside. And that inside is what, especially in other communities, they clinch onto. And I know in this country we do have them. And in these children we came to the camp, they have them. And that is what I want to hope I can give by the power of my example. I don't say it, I show it. And I hope that power of don't tell, show, it, uh, is what I will encourage uh, us to consider. Her final words for Nigerians in the diaspora are inspiring. Many Nigerians, and I told you I have travels that I like me. They want to come home. They want to do what I'm doing. So for me, they are, they are rather that we should encourage them to really make a deliberate effort to open up the venue for them to come in. More importantly, there are Nigerians that we really need to make them the hero they are by you know, boosting them up from what they are doing. They are in this school, we met the assistant headmaster whose wife is in the hospital, who has to cook for his children before he comes in the morning. And for me, these are the unsung heroes. And so every single person that is doing something to add value to this life, we should promote it.